It took a while, right? After the boy left our library. So 89, uh, the city announced plans to merge the old park library with the new Colonial Heights Library. The buildings were sold to University from University of Pacific to the Georgia School of Law. And in 1993, it closed. I graduated high school in 91, right? So up to that space, up to that time, I utilized that library. That was huge on the way home, on the walk home. Um, that library is a staple in our, in our community. Okay, here we go. So we, we were able to meet with the, uh, the library or to get some of these statistics. And so one of the things we want to look at was the service area, right? Because you'll see a little bit later in, the, um, in this presentation, the city made the, the, the uh, decision to, to merge libraries, right? So they opened up the Colonial Heights. So, um, so what you'll see in that middle circle, in that middle yellow area, excuse me, is you'll see the, the, uh, the service. And around that, you'll see all the libraries that are around it, right? And so what happens is we merge three libraries into one. So if you look at it, the surrounding communities are shown by the color-coded visit, uh, visit dots within the community boundaries. And so we don't see a lot of usage there. It's not as dense as it is in some of the areas where you see libraries. So this is Broadway Waters and Green Bay. Look at that, right? You don't see that in Colonial Heights. Hey, can we ask questions as we go? Are you okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, how do they define, like, how do they define the usage? How, do they, how does that map get dense? What does that mean? Uh, what do you mean? So, like that map shows library use, right? Uh -huh. So, I mean, how do they measure that? Uh, uh, well, the, 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 you know, uh, people who visit, people who visit library, right? Where are they based? Right. right. And so, what that shows is that, you know, people from this neighborhood are going to different libraries, right? And that's why it's more dense here. They don't have libraries in there. All right. So, um, as you know, as some of you may know, the uh, Colonial Heights Library is uh, located in the southeast of uh, Sacramento, the city's east boundary. Uh, my district, we share a boundary. They have the east side of Stockton Boulevard. We have the west side of Stockton Boulevard. So it's on that east side. So it's the district six. Uh, it's moderately sized. You remember our library was 11,900 square feet. This one is moderately sized. It was built to consolidate and replace three branches. Old Park Library, Fruitville, and the Lane Gillis Library. So the decision was made to consolidate all three of them and put them in this space, right? Um, as a result, this lo location serves as a larger population, so there's a larger population that goes there. Um, and it's very busy. If you, go, if you go to Colonial Heights, it's a very busy library. Not even enough spaces, computers, or anything. Because people, uh, because we don't have a library here, people visit there, and it's a lot. Um, so again, in, in attendance, now they can gain computer usage, right, things of that nature, and they can, they can see how many people are visiting. Okay, so this is kind of what it looks like. Wait a minute, I have a question back here. Oh, yeah, I uh, okay. Okay, back in the day, it was only going by checked out books. Yes, ma'am. It was not who visited, because I went to that library, too. Yes, ma'am. And they, when you come in and do your homework or whatever, they didn't count us. Yes, ma'am. It was just being counted up and checked out. So what happens now is that um, libraries serve like different purposes now, right? So there's a lot of people doing research and things of that nature. And, and that's the exciting thing about real libraries. It won't be it won't be traditional, right? So we plan to have community meeting rooms, um, you know, uh, I'm looking at a bigger space possibly things of that nature. So the library will be here and we'll have stacks of books, but it'll also have um, you know modern things. The new learners. So, um, all right. So, the colonial. Yeah, I'm sorry. Another question. Oh, I was going to say the library, like the, the data map, that's the
point. So, uh, you, you have a map here of the service area and how it's consolidated. So, if you look at uh, the distance to Colonial Heights uh, from Oak Park Library, is 2.2 miles. From Fruit Ridge Library, it's 4 miles. And from Mendel Hill, it's 1.1 miles. So, the, 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 the effort to consolidate, um, it, it, you know, it did a lot for, um, to kind of take that service away from the community. What happens is I remember my mom would always say, you know, when, when the library closed, um, when I was a little older, but I had none of the brothers and sisters, and my mom just kind of let us walk across Stockton Boulevard to get to the library. That's just not going to happen. You know, so my grandmother lived on 33rd and 9th Avenue. We were always at my grandmother's house. Uh, myself, my cousins, uh, Sarita Beverly, and Tambo, and like I said, my aunt was a school teacher. So, in my family, we played school. That's what we did. We played, <laughs> we played all our school, right? We had a chalkboard house and so forth. What would happen is we would always, always, always go to the library. That was the safe space to go to the library. So um, when that happened, not only for me, for a lot of kids in Oak Park, that put a hole in a lot of our programs. Yes, ma'am. One good question. Will this library have internet access? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. 
Yes, so you're looking at uh, proximity to you know proximity to uh, organizations and um, the people who would really, really, really benefit from this. Uh, we look, we took a look. So the proposed whole park uh, uh, library site. I guess that's on Alhambra. You got Well State here, Salvation Army, uh, Age of Resources, High Charter School, Urban League, Black Child Legacy Campaign, as well as Sacramento High School. So as I mentioned before, uh, you know, in this area you have probably three to five houses places. You consider, you know, American Legion, Red Heart uh, uh, Elementary School. I got the Cal Middle School from here, right? Um, Oak Ridge, Father Keith U. Kenny. And now we have learners coming in from other places. So Agnes Square will be good. Uh, classrooms here, right? So the overflow of those students, you, you all need to go to two schools. It's that time, y'all. Oak Park needs two. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Since we've had an extensive, elaborate encampment there, mm -hmm. how is that going to be addressed? Good question. So, you know, there's, there's current efforts, there's current efforts to, um, you know, to, you know, hope to find housing, right? Um, um, for that again, we do have an actual navigation center there. Um, and so there will be efforts to, 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 to kind of um, clean that up. But I don't think that is a positive because those individuals also need, they need the library as well, right? That's a huge problem we face sometimes with the house that they need access to computers and so they can apply and register for things. And so in taking a look at that, you know, we kind of think it's a positive thing that the library be there. But we'll have efforts to, to make sure that it's safe around the library and understand that, you know, if young kids and, and people will kind of move together to make sure that that's safe. Yeah. So will you have security on site for that? Um, well, you know what, that's, we haven't really discussed that yet, but if that's, that'll be the discussion if that's needed for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, you made a good point. Uh, you, it seems like you did your analysis on the place, on the location and everything. I'm looking at the safety issue. Mm -hmm. uh,
there's just this conversation um, about how about you know we open the conversation about possibly, maybe, um, see if we can visit that conversation about uh, you know getting that space back. But uh, nothing is super super substantial uh, in terms of the conversation. But let me say this: as someone who's from a part, right, and got my first part kind of on there, my first you know uh, a library part. Learning to do it as the whole nine, it would be, right? It would be, I don't even know how to tell you how it feels to be able to get that straight back. But at the same time, we understand that, you know, the first is theirs and it's up to them. So, yeah. Um, just with everyone's concern about security, I think the best ideally would be kind of what the downtown partnership has, you know, where they kind of patrol the area. And if they see someone, you know, someone unhoused, then they can give them resources so they don't necessarily kick them to the curb. And exactly like you said, the ex uh, shelter is right there, so it would be a good uh, thing. And then uh, the other thing, I just, I don't, I think you should just cut your losses and just have McGeorge do a donation. Because, yeah, exactly what you said, we have all this nostalgia to that building, but at the end of the day, they purchased yeah. And you know, at, uh, real estate is you know it's it's a really high commodity in this country. So I don't really see them giving that back. But if they could do a substantial donation, then I think that might you know you know kind of compensate for you know them buying that building if they don't want to go that route. You yeah. know, because it, it'll be, just be good PR at the end of the day. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I think what happens though at the same time is um, someone who's born and raised here. Conversation of this place and all this comes up. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so what happens if you have money, right? It's a lot of history. Yeah. So it means a lot. Yeah. Right? So at least having a conversation, I think there's nothing wrong with that. No, I don't know. It doesn't hurt to ask. I do too. Yeah, I think that should be a nice consolation, you know? Yeah, yeah. 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 
on the second street. Uh, that gave us a, uh, an opportunity to have at least some kind of a library in the community if we started smaller. Okay. Um, I mentioned we made a presentation to uh, Vice Mayor Council Member Jay Shear. We also made a presentation uh, to Dick George and I met with uh, um, several uh, staff here. They were supportive. In fact, uh, Dean Schultz, I met with him, he and we met with him, and he said, yes, it's a positive thing. He's very supportive. He felt the students would benefit greatly from having a library in the community. We also, I also engaged in conversation with the staff at the city's hospital. They're supportive. They said that having a room in the library where they could share information, medical information, with people in the community would be fantastic. I have been to their site and they do have such a room, but it's located on that massive hospital grant home. It's hard to find. But if we had it in the library, it would be accessible, that information to the whole community. So um, one of the goals as far as the next steps, we launched in 2015 uh, petitions of uh, support from the community. And our goal was 1,500 signatures, and I'm pleased to say today we're at 1,000, so we're just a little short, about 500, which we will obtain. These signatures will be presented to the Joint Power Authority uh, with the city for a library in Central Park. So I want all of your support. <laughs> for this presentation when we get ready to launch it. Uh, and we feel we're going to be successful. I don't know um, if you've noticed, but money is going towards library efforts. For example, Bell Coolidge is right now under a massive reorganization uh, or redevelopment. Also, colonial fights. You can't get in there because they fenced it off there. What is that going to be used for? 
you being a one of five iconic kind of targets, it's all by the George. And I've asked direct about uh, letting us get the library back and they said no so far. They got ideas. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you.
So I can put out a lot of RFC PID passport. So this is the program that we can get in. Because each of your engineers are hosting a network of data edits. So we're trying to simplify it and make it look like this for our community. So the more you volunteer, we're going to get each of our community members, each of our community centers, or our programs, or our parks. And then we'll get a more thoughtful or basically gain hours for the prizes. So some of the prizes all have a list of data that you can on it. Um, and then the way you can have is very similar to how you are just programs here. We're going to get a membership. Um, there's two levels. Level one is for all ages. That means our members all the way to our older adults who volunteer. And that can be just a one day volunteer opportunity for like one of the clubs we'll talk about a little bit later. Or you get level two. So I know I would work with a lot of different community members that volunteer on a regular basis every single week for the yoga class or The other opportunity that we have is group volunteer opportunities. So a lot of these groups, especially the ones that we've been part of or the community, already have ideas to how to enhance our parks. We can't do everything on our own. I saw in the video there's 236 parks and counting. Uh, so I wanted to bring this group volunteer opportunity because you guys can send in a interest form uh, and let us know what you guys want to see enhanced in your parks. And in partner with our parks department, we have equipment to not make them all on their own. We have a lot of experts. We have someone who is an arborist on our team that can specifically tell you how to build more uh, tree shade in our community. Um, and then you can also get more volunteer uh, or register your entire team or get more volunteers to cross the state. That's about it. I think that there are any questions. What are some of the prizes for the or like? Yeah, what do VIPs get? Yeah, so we got a couple of little like marketing, like swag stuff, like a bag, and there's a crazy piece of beach ball, and there's a big period. Any other questions?
Thank you guys for coming. We'll see you uh, June 6th. Uh, I know we've had a conversation with Chuck Sack, our team, about coming on June 6th and doing a big presentation about how bus rapid transit is coming to stop the war and their game plan for that. So kind of, kind of an exciting uh, thing. We're back in the main building. We're not, this is the last time we're out here. We're out the next. So we're back in the main building. Thank you for, I know there is some scheduling, so thanks for accommodating us. All right, everybody, thank you.